Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapse version of Rufus the Spaniel. Now I hope you enjoy seeing this come together here but there will also be real-time tutorials over on my Patreon channel if you're interested in learning more and I already have a huge library of tutorials over there if you want to check it out. But if you enjoy this here then please do subscribe here on YouTube and maybe even stick around and have a look through some of my other playlists but enjoy Little Rufus. This piece is on pastel mat. It's the pastel mat board or the thicker card that I like to use. And this is the Sienna color, which I also use quite a lot. I really like this warm mid-tone and how it adds a lot of warmth to the piece, even when you're adding cooler colours on top. So in the photo reference, there was more going on in the background, and I decided to make it quite plain. But I will include some detail on the lovely bed that Rufus is lying on. I always like to include a little bit of their surroundings when possible in a portrait. I think it tells a lovely bit of their story and where they like to hang out. So in this case, it's a really nice gray colored bed, which I'm gonna try and bring out more of the lilac tones. And of course, Rufus himself has all of these beautiful, rich brown tones. You'll also see me use some deep purples. Um, one of my favorite colors in the unison range, gray eight. So I will bring some blue and purple tones into the dog as well. And this particular colour of Spaniel is tricky. This shade of brown, um, often referred to as liver. And it's got a lot in common with the likes of a red setter. There are some really rich tones running through this fur. And in this case, I'm also using a little bit of one of my favourite Terry Ludwig colours. It's a lovely dark eggplant colour and I seem to pick it up often when I'm painting this colour of subject. It just adds that rich purple tone to my brown tones. So as always I kind of work from top to bottom. It means that I can lean my hand on the rest of the painting where I haven't applied any pigment yet. So that's mainly why I tend to work from the top down. And I'm just gradually building up the layers. You can see that I do bring in some pastel pencil, which I use for the finer details. But at the same time, I can get most of the detail that I want using the bigger sticks. And as always, I prefer to get as much of the detail as possible with the big sticks because of the lovely vibrance and strength of their colours. But those pencils and their sharp point certainly come in useful. As you can see, most of the pastels are quite blunt shapes. But even so, it's possible to get small marks and tiny details from the big sticks. It just takes a little bit of practice. Sometimes you can feel a little bit clumsy with the big sticks when you first start out. But I encourage you to persevere because you can get such a variety of lovely marks from the bigger sticks. If you're interested in seeing how I go about getting details with the big sticks, here on my YouTube channel, I do have a video showing you all my different tricks for um, wearing the pastels down into interesting and useful shapes, breaking them, all sorts of tricks that I use to get details from the big sticks. So if you're interested in having a go in soft pastel, definitely have a look around my YouTube playlists as I have lots of informational videos as well as this style of time-lapse video. I also have some real-time tutorials on here that you can work along with me from beginning to end.
And then if you'd like even more choice um, and a huge selection of tutorials, do check out my tutorials library on my website, emmacolbertart.com. And there you can browse through all of the tutorials that I've got available through my Patreon channel. The most interesting thing about this photo reference was the fact that very little of the image is in focus. The only thing that's really in sharp focus is the dog's face. Even when we get to the outer edges of the ears, that are furthest away from the face, things start to blur. And then behind that, the body of the dog is really blurred. But it was interesting in this portrait to try and create some areas within the fur that have very little definition, that it's really quite blurry. And I really softened the edges around the edges of the ears. Even when I'm coming in with some pastel pencil, I'm trying to use the pencils a little bit more blunt than I normally would. And that was giving me a broader mark, a little bit more like the types of mark that I get from the big sticks. So even when I was neatening things up on the ears, I tried to use blunt pencils so that it would still give me a nice broad mark. If you want to avoid going into too much detail in an area, then don't let your marks get too small. For example, down the front of the nose, I try to make my marks as small as possible just to replicate that short fur that comes down the front of a muzzle usually. And also to give it more definition and detail on the front of the face, which I really want to pop out from the picture. So a photo reference like this is a real dream for me to paint. I really enjoy painting um, a sense of depth within a painting. And this one was interesting because there's such a range of different areas of depth just on the dog's face alone. So from the, the front of the face over to one of the ears, you really have to feel like it's started to go out of focus. And that's what I was trying to achieve with this. And soft pastel is just the perfect medium for it because you can so easily soften your edges and make something look quite blurred, just using your fingertip and blending, smudging the pigment around a little. But that's something that I do a lot in my work and usually I'm adding some sense of depth or distance within the background and making the main subject pop out. So if you're interested in that kind of effect or in creating backgrounds where you normally find this kind of um, camera blur, then do check out some of my other tutorials. I have lots and lots of blurred background tutorials as that's something that I love to create. So those lovely unison colour pastels, such strength of colour that you get from them. And many of these colours that I'm using do appear in my Unison Animal set, a selection of colours that I chose specifically for Unison for their animal set. Certainly if you have the animal set, you would have enough colours to complete a portrait like this. This was definitely one of the types of fur that I considered when designing that set. As it's a colour of animal I get to paint quite often. Spaniels are a popular dog. I've painted many, many spaniels over the years. I mentioned red setters. There are many other dog breeds with this colour. And then, of course, horses and other types of animals too. I've recently painted a cow, which you'll also find as a, a full-length tutorial on my Patreon channel. 
and it also had similar kind of rich brown tones but also some really deep purples coming in too. So it's definitely one of the trickier colours of animal to capture. I know I had problems with this colour in the beginning and it was only really when I started to bring in purple tones that this this colour became one of my favourites to paint. Somehow those rich purple tones really help. And hopefully in the tutorial that I make from this piece I can show you how to start bringing in colours like that, how to start seeing those other colours that you may not see initially. And it's really just about having a very basic and simple understanding of colour theory. If this is something you'd like to know more about then again here on my YouTube channel I have a, a full uh, playlist all dedicated to colour theory where I try to break it down in the simplest way possible and show you how to actually apply colour theory in your work as that's something that took me a long time to grasp. I understood what colour theory was but I had no idea how to put it into my paintings. So just adding some foreground detail. Some areas of the photo are a little bit more in focus. This paw that's coming out towards us and the, the little edge of the bed that it's resting on. So I'm just choosing certain areas of the painting to bring slightly more into focus. And soft pastel really is a fantastic medium for capturing that effect. You can see from this little piece that you can really create lots of different um, amounts of in focus within one painting. So it's not just completely out of focus or completely in focus. There's a whole scale in between and you can really control it with soft pastel just by how firmly you blend, how much pressure you apply. Lots of little tricks that hopefully I can show you in this tutorial. But as we're nearing the end, I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this piece come together in time lapse. It's always nice for me to look back at them in time lapse, wishing I could really work that fast. Do remember to subscribe here on YouTube if you've enjoyed this. And I will add links to my website tutorials library and to my Patreon as well if you're interested in learning more. But once again, thanks very much for watching this here. And until next time, happy pastling.